Welcome back as we begin our final lesson in our series, Seven Steps to God. Now, in our last lesson, we began talking about the importance of being born again, and we're going to pick up where we left off in that. The question we may ask is, who will be in heaven? In Revelation 21 and verse 24, it says, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, the light of heaven. We must be saved from our sins in order to go to heaven. Judgment day is coming. Romans 14 and verse 12 says, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We're not going to be judged according to man's standard. I think we can all recognize that man's standard is very subjective and very given to change. But rather, we're going to be judged according to God's standard. In Romans chapter 2 and verse 2, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Again, what is truth? John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word, talking about the Bible, is truth. The Bible is the source of truth. So according to Jesus, we're going to be judged out of the Bible. Bible truth is all we're going to get. In Luke 16, 29, when the rich man in hell asked for God to send someone back to earth to warn his brothers, the reply was, they have Moses and the prophets. In other words, they have the Bible. Let them hear them. So besides God's truth, that is what's found in the Bible, we'll also be judged by God's standard the Ten Commandments, as we talked about in the last lesson. According to the Ten Commandments, we are covetous liars, blasphemers, idolaters, and adulterers. James 2.10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. That means that if we're guilty of bearing false witness of telling a lie we're guilty as if we had committed murder as if we had blasphemed as if we had coveted as if we're just as guilty as someone who had done the others there are other commandments that the bible also gives us for example do you really love your neighbor as yourself are you ever selfish angry impatient harsh, proud, wasteful, gossipy, stingy, insensitive, insincere, inappropriate, undependable, unforgiving, or disloyal. All of those things are part of God's standard for us. And that is the standard by which we will be judged. In looking at God's Word, God's truth found in the Bible and God's standard, we have to come to the conclusion that we are serious sinners and that sin is serious. Again, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 and 10 says, The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5.21 says, They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What this tells us is that going to heaven is not automatic. Just because Jesus is the Savior of the world does not mean that we are automatically saved. Most people have never been saved. They've never been converted 
or born again because they don't see how desperately they need to be born again. They are born spiritually dead. They're condemned. They're alienated from God. But they fail to recognize the reality of their situation. John 3.18 says, He that believeth not is condemned already. Remember, no one has always been a Christian. No one is automatically going to heaven. Without being saved or born again, we will one day face the wrath of God. In John chapter 3 and verse 36, we read, He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. They're not going to see heaven, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Romans 1.18 says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth, the Bible, in unrighteousness. In other words, they take sin lightly while ignoring the Bible. Well, it's no big deal what I'm doing. And I'll go to heaven anyway. No. Again, every one of us have to recognize ourselves as serious sinners. So the question then comes, what do I need to do? Or what do I need to be saved from? The answer is simple. I need to be saved from my sin. You need to be saved from your sin. Remember, all the way back in Lesson 1, we talked about the fact that our sinful soul must be converted by salvation that is taught in God's Word. Psalm 19 and verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The problem is that self-righteousness sends many people to hell. They see themselves, they refuse to see themselves as serious sinners. Remember the parable of the Pharisee and the publican, where the Pharisee never found forgiveness because he refused to admit his own sinfulness. Romans 3 and verse 10 tells us there is none righteous. No, not one. Isaiah 64 verse 6 says we are all as an unclean thing and our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Luke 19 10 says for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus is willing and able to save us, but we must be willing to see ourselves as lost. That is the key. Afterwards, salvation is merely a matter of faith in Christ and repentance from sin. Now that may surprise you, and so you may ask, what is repentance? Now, repentance is the twin sister of faith. In other words, the two go together. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 21, speaking of the gospel he preached, the apostle Paul said, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 6.1 mentions repentance from dead works. Repentance is what is missing in most people who want to be born again. When it comes to going to heaven, most people want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to go to heaven, but they don't want to think any differently concerning the sin that's taking them to hell. Repentance is the key because it is a change of heart and mind that ultimately brings a change of life. Luke 13 and verse 3 tells us, Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Sin is anything that goes contrary to the Bible. 1 John 3, 4 defines sin as this. Sin is the transgression of the law. In order to be born again, we must repent or make a 180 degree turn in the way that we think about God the way we think about Jesus, and the way we think about our sin. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
the sad fact is that most people refuse to repent. In John 7, I'm sorry, in Matthew 7 and verse 13, Jesus said, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. People would rather not change their mind about God. They would rather not change their mind about Jesus. They would rather not change their mind about sin. And because of that, they are not born again. Their sins are not forgiven. And they have not found their way to God. Repentance, again, is a turn of heart and mind from wrong to right. In 2 Kings 17, 13, we read, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes. In Acts 14, 15, We preach unto you that ye should turn or repent from these vanities unto the living God. Again, according to Acts chapter 26 and verse 18, Jesus came to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. 1 Thessalonians 1.9 says, Ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And remember, an idol can be anything that comes before God, whether it's money or materialism, drunkenness, adultery, false religion, anything that we put in place of God. We must turn from that in order to turn to God. Normally, there's one main thing that stands in the way of getting saved. There's probably one main thing you're thinking of right now. Well, if I repent, that means I have to give up or I'm going to have to think differently about something. Are you willing to repent of that? Are you willing to think about that not as something fun and enjoyable, but as something that has caused you to be on the road to hell? We need to think about that. Repentance will mean turning away from different things, depending on the person. Again, not everyone is, has the same issues. And so not everyone will have to think differently about different things. And, and some people have to turn away from what people think. Some are fearful about what people think if they get religious in Revelation 21 and verse 8 the Bible tells us but the fearful and unbelieving shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone if you're afraid of what people think that very thing could be what keeps you from heaven some people don't want to turn away from their self importance and their pride the Apostle Paul had to repent of his philosophy of working for salvation and his false religion in order to be saved. In Acts chapter 9, verse 6, Paul says, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? He'd been involved in that religion for many, many years. And now he's got to turn away from his pride and his self-importance that's bound up in that false religion. Some have to turn away from sexual immorality. The woman at the well that we find in John chapter 4 had to repent of her sexual immorality in order to be saved. Some have to repent of their alcoholism. 1 Corinthians 6.10 says, Nor drunkards shall inherit the kingdom of God. Then there are those involved in false religion. Nicodemus had to turn from his false religion to follow the Bible and Christ. Some will have to repent or turn from their own family. The healed blind man parted from his family when he was saved. Some have to turn from their greed and materialism, such as Zacchaeus, the tax collector, who had made it a business to be greedy and to extort money from people, he had to turn away from that in order to be born again. And then there's just wrong living. The Philippian jailer was 
really willing to turn from his rough living when he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? It was very clear there he was willing to change anything, to do anything in order to be saved. And then some need to turn away from their own self-righteousness. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, What must I do in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven? And in that response that Jesus gave him, that rich young ruler was not willing to repent. He held on to his self-righteousness. And as a result, he went to hell. Sadly, some are not willing to repent. Herod was not willing to repent of his sin. In Acts 26 and verse 28, Then Agrippa, Herod Agrippa, said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Felix, the Roman governor, wasn't willing to repent of his sins. In Acts 24, 25, And as he, that is Paul, reasoned, of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He wasn't willing to repent. In Matthew 6 and verse 24, Jesus said, No man can serve two masters. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon meaning meaning the things of this world. Repentance is the missing ingredient for most people. They're not willing to repent. They're not willing to change their mind about their sin. And because they're not willing to repent, they never truly place their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that brings us to this question. What is faith? Faith is not a feeling, but simply a matter of taking God at his word. Titus 1 and verse 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. If you mean business with God, and you're ready to give him your heart and your life, you can pray from your heart, and God will save you. Jesus promises this, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's from John 6, 37. Remember, God always keeps his promises. Romans 10, verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a promise he gives. And again, God always keeps his promises. It's a decision you must make. Will I repent? Will I change my thinking about God? Will I change my thinking about Jesus? Will I change my thinking about sin? And will I place my faith totally in what Jesus has already done on the cross? If you're willing to do that, you should call on the Lord today. And you should ask Him to save you today that your soul might be converted that you might know what it is to have your sins forgiven that you might know what it is to have a relationship with God now to know what it is to have the assurance of eternity with God in heaven if you have chosen to repent and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and have been born again spiritually, that's going to make me very happy and I'm going to rejoice with you. God has given you salvation and you can never lose that. In John chapter 10, verses 27 and 28, Jesus tells us, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. If you have made a decision to repent of your sin and to place your faith in what Jesus did for you, would you please contact us and let us know? 
because we would like to rejoice with you. And we'd like to follow up and give you more teaching that can help you as a new believer in Jesus Christ.